Hey! That was kind of on sync this time. I was getting pretty good again. Ooh, we're getting so good at the clapping. <laughs> it's so nice. I love that our first episode of this season just dropped and like it's weeks after we recorded it. So I listened to it like it was brand new. It was so nice. Yeah, I was like, I don't remember having any of these conversations. Nope. That's what happens whenever I listen to a podcast because I'm like, oh my God, this was like a month ago. <laughs> yeah, well, I was saying to you guys, I was like, I'm listening to this podcast and sometimes I just say shit. <laughs> sometimes I literally just say shit and like, and, and then I listen to it back and I'm like, why did I say that? It was unneeded. I love it. I love it. And like the amount of stuff that I've cut around to that I'm like, we are, we went for it like in some of these conversations <laughs> we love it we love it but welcome back everybody we're back in season four this is a shameless recap podcast the luck we had i am one of your hosts my name is amanda i'm your other host evan i'm your third host lena and what is up i we are recording these so far in advance so as of right now it is october 6th what we know happening in the world is that Facebook and Instagram shut down a couple of days ago and the Zodiac They found the Zodiac. Found. They found the Zodiac killer. <laughs> they found the Zodiac killer. They found him, but he has been dead. He's dead. Years. Yeah. But um, Mercury is firmly in retrograde, kicking my ass sideways. Uh, but if anything has happened between now, October 6th, and when this episode comes out, which I think will be November, Jeez. just know that we don't know it yet because you're in the future and we're in the past. <laughs> Ooh, I love being in the past. I love being in the past. <laughs> I love not knowing what I'm not going to know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's so nice to talk to you guys. It's been a hot minute since we recorded. Yeah, it's been at least like a week or two. I know. We just spent like 30 minutes just chatting before we even started recording. Yeah, we had to catch up. We had to talk about what's been going on. <laughs> Got to talk about Supernatural beforehand always. I know this is the third episode in of the new season, but we took a lovely little break that was so good for all of our sanity, I think. Uh, we got to enjoy the coming of fall. Mm -hmm. We got to well, relax. Amanda's on a temporary leave again. <laughs> yeah. When we were trying to schedule this recording, though, I think we canceled like four or five times. Four or five times. Something yeah, like that. It um, just kept happening. It is all of my fault. No, it was my fault one of the days because I was like, I'm sick. <laughs> And, and then the other one was mine because we, I had stuff to do. Well, and you got locked out of your Sebastian. house the other day. And then I got locked out of my house the other night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were straight up going to record. Then Evan is like, I've been locked out of my home. So. And we were like, yeah, my okay. key, my mom locked the top lock and then she wasn't responding to me. So what? Well, yeah, that. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. We're back now. Uh, someone tweeted a couple of people like tweeted at me and commented on my TikTok. They're like, when are the new episodes coming? Like people were waiting and it was so nice. Oh my God. Hey, besties. <laughs> That's so sweet. We got a, I got a Tumblr message. Let me read it to you guys. Actually, it was kind of funny, uh, but I responded to it in a very sinister way. I think it said, everyone else is like, I could fix him and I could make him worse while Amanda's out here. Like I could write a dissertation on, on him actually. And we love that for them. And I said, so true. Amanda is really such a neutral party. She doesn't want to get involved just to analyze. I could fix him, though. I just always choose not to because it's funnier. Any fictional man is my little pet hamster. <laughs> <laughs> that is so good. I mean, and you did. And you did. Don't, and you did. Don't at <laughs> and me. Um, <laughs> link to the dissertation on our website. <laughs> With my dissertation and my two different podcasts analyzing all of the broken gay characters on television. Yup. And I'm, and I'm like, and I'm like, he's my little pet hamster. He's just my guy. Like... <laughs> And I'm over here like, that's, that's me. You're, you're kidding. That's you're kidding. I'm giggling and you're <laughs> analyzing. Someone <laughs> named Laura on Twitter also, the at is Malik's Marble, M-A-L-E-C as in Malik, uh, Magnus and Alec, tweeted at us, I love hearing the luck we had trying to figure out the time gap between season three and four. And I was so with you on the week or a month idea until I remembered we find out Svetlana is pregnant at the end of season three and she's nearly to term by the start of season four. So now my brain hurts. Yes, <laughs> right? That's, it makes it so confusing. And I think it's because like, no, no, because Isadora was not pregnant for real that time, but she was pregnant for real in season five. And so yeah. it's like, and so it's like, okay, so they didn't have to work around that. They had to work nope. around Shinola getting pregnant, but it was like, mm -hmm. yeah, Isadora popped a little early, probably. No, she wasn't even pregnant in season four. She was pregnant in season five. Oh, shit. Yeah, true. But like, even if they had to work around Shinola being pregnant, Carol could have been as pregnant as they wanted her to be that whole time. And, and she could have just had the babies at a different time. It didn't have to be at exactly the same time. We can't. We can't get it's, into that. Or it's we kind of, into I don't, again. I just, I can't get into the timeline. We're just going to pretend like it, nothing happened. And the timeline only starts from the beginning of the season to the end of the season. And that is it. 
And then even from episode to episode, age doesn't matter. Time doesn't matter. John Wells made nope. it so. In every other season except this season, the timeline somewhat makes sense because it's like either like a whole spring has passed in like it's summer or it's been like a whole year. Like the season two to season three gap is like basically a year because it's like November-ish to, to the next summer. And so it's like, okay, that makes sense. And like everybody's a year older, sure, because we've missed a lot of like the year. Mm-hmm. But season four is like, this shit happened three weeks ago. <laughs> And everyone's a year older, yeah. and it makes no sense. But you know what? We're going to get into it. I th- I'm just going to go ahead and go through people's credits. But Lena, I love the way that you did the narration in 402. So oh, this one is you. all yours, too. I did the notes, but you fucking take it. If I put it in anything ridiculous, I'm sorry. Um, I just, I'll just <laughs> let you say it because it's your opinion. And then I'll be like, here's my opinion. But let's get the the writers, because this is a dual writer episode. Every... We let's like also say we know that every episode has a writer's room, but there is a head mm-hmm. writer that is credited on every episode, so they are the one that we ascribe the episode because to. Because then we'd be reading out like eight people's names, yeah. and that's too much. But we see some frequent names on the head writers, and we know that John Wells is is technically a writer on every episode because he has a say in the script. But whatever. Yeah, homeboys in the room doesn't do much except for the finale he was just fucking gone for the finale yeah <laughs> wait of this <laughs> of this season or of you mean the series, the series finale of the series he was just not there yeah and then everybody on set was like john's not here yeah everyone's like celebrating the end he's like they were really pointed about it too they were like oh who's john like <laughs> noel was so <laughs> yeah noel was like john who and it's like motherfucker you're 40 shut the hell up <laughs> like <laughs> Well, you posted on Instagram the other day and I texted you guys and I was like, and I was like, he looks 40. No, I take it back. (laughs) He looks 50. (laughs) Oh, God. That blonde hair just looks like gray hair. Well, it's like, why as a man are you blonde? Why is it? <laughs> Which is weird because he's not. He's ginger. So I don't know why no, he goes blonde instead of letting himself be ginger. I don't know. Any of us that watched Max Keeble's big move knows that that man is a ginger. Oh. He's like, he's almost like Cameron Ginger. It's like a deep, it's dark very red. red. Does it work for my him? Google's is his name. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh my google's his name and he had the shirts that used to be like one of my favorite movies when i was a kid and i didn't even know who noel fisher was but it was like when he when he's he had an asian sh- cody banks as well yeah i knew about that yeah. but it's like when he has the shirts and he unzips it and it's the kid that he's gonna beat up and then it's like josh peck and it's like rope kid <laughs> one of them the what the last one that he has on his shirt is hello vladimir which is his character's name in breaking dawn part two i know yeah people like to talk about it a lot a lot Okay. That's so funny. But we're talking about him because we get a little bit of taste of him in this episode. Uh, but let's get into it. This is episode 403, Like Father, Like Daughter. It aired on January 26th, 2014. It was written by Miss Sheila Callahan and Lisa Morales. Sheila, this is the third of 12 of her shameless writing credits. She wrote 305 and 311 bangers both of them sins of my caretaker mm-hmm. and order room service this one and hope springs paternal 408 she gets us yeah <laughs> yeah she all, all of her episodes it's like no she gets us 503 the two leases 510 south side rules 606 nsfw 611 sleep no more 704 i am story 709 it's i am a storm i am a I am, storm i am yeah yeah i am the storm I am, I am the storm. storm. I am a storm. Yeah. 704, 709 Ouroboros, which I think is the Mickey episode. It is. Yeah. Uh, at the, well, at the end, it's like the cop comes and is like, yeah. Do you know this guy? <laughs> um, have you been in contact with Mickey? 805 is the miseducation of Liam Gallagher. 810, the church of gay Jesus. Those are, those are her credits. So she lasted until season eight and then she got the fuck out of there. She said, bye. <laughs> And Lisa Morales, this is the first of 11 episodes that she writes on through season five. Hey, bestie. She wrote on this one, 405, there's the rub, 406, Iron City, 407, Jailbird, 408, Hope Springs Paternal, 411, Emily, and 412, yes! Lazarus. She yes! really just handled that whole, you know, cocaine storyline. Yeah. Because like, it was like 405, 6, 7, 8, and then like 11 and 12, because 11 sees Fiona back in jail. Yep. And it's like, Homegirl, she's got it. Banger after banger, for real. And then she was in the back half of 508 in the writer's room on five or season five of the writer's room. She wrote on 508, Uncle Carl, 509, Carl's first sentencing, 510, Southside Rules, and 511, Drugs, actually. 
good episode. Maybe that's why, like, because it seems like she just writes a bunch of them in a row. Maybe that's why those episodes flow so well together. Because the thing that always gets me- It's the same constant. Because there's a consistent voice in the room. Yeah, the thing that always gets me about season four is that I'm like, from episode six on, banger after banger. Like, really good episode after really good episode. They all just flow really nicely together. And, like, same with season five, I would say, like, the the back half of season five, it's like- Episode after episode, they just make sense together, and maybe it's because Miss it Morales is in is the room. Is it Lisa Morales the reason that season two? Do we owe her everything? The the Do we honestly have to tip our hats to her? Someone I'm giving her, her flowers. She's also written on Queen Sugar, Rosewood, and Bluff City Law. Um, but like Lisa Morales, are you the reason that these are my favorite seasons? You might be the reason these are my favorite seasons. We gotta find her. Get her on the podcast. <laughs> let's, like, get hey, her on the pod. let's get her let's on the pod. Let's talk about your writing. Let's get her on the pod. And this episode was directed by returning director Sana Hamri. This is the third of four shameless episodes she directs. Uh, she did 111 Daddy's Girl, 311 Order Room Service, Loves a Penultimate. This one and 502 I'm the Liver. Other recent credits are 911 Lone Star and American Horror Stories, the new one. Oh, good for Ooh, her. Yeah. Love me. 911 Original Recipe is the one that's queer baiting me, but 911 Lone Star is also very good. And that one's not queer baiting. That one has gay people for real. Yeah, well, the original 911 also has gay people for real. Like, it's got a lesbian couple, but they're also queer baiting me. But it's not like the gay people, the yeah. the ones. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but from there, I'm just going to let Lena, you take it. And I will I will jump in when necessary. Ooh, okay. It's so exciting. Let's I don't go. think you've ever been on a pod with me when i've led it because every time it's been yeah lena normally leads when it's just us two yeah okay i'll be Ooh, honest okay. i'm the one that edits these so it's really nice to hear someone that's not me talking for 80 percent of the time <laughs> <laughs> yeah. True. okay well for 403 uh like father like daughter synopsis frank stalks his previously unseen daughter sammy and is surprised to find out she has a son chuck fiona and mike get serious plus sheila has her first successful online date with a Native American cowboy. Uh, previously on was done by Lip. Um, and previously on Shameless. Frank's liver is failing and he needs a new one. Stan left Kevin the bar. That's also failing. Carl finds out that someone from the family can donate a liver to Frank. V is pregnant with triplets. Lip is struggling in school. Debbie's dating a grown ass man. <laughs> Fiona refuses to donate her liver to Frank because he'll trash it. And Carl is pissed. And Frank says he'll get his other daughter to do it. His older daughter, Samantha. Bum, bum, bum. Bomb drop. Dun, dun. <laughs> so after the title sequence, Fiona wakes up at Mike's and he's blasting One Direction. Uh, and Fiona drops that she likes Kanye. Uh, the Kanye that she's talking about, that era of Kanye, very good music. Not going to lie. Yeah. yeah, she was like, I like Kanye. And I was like, oh, bestie, bad news. <laughs> it's no. like nowadays that would be like, oh. I'll... Be like, red flag. <laughs> well, it would just be like, so you don't listen to rap at all then. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> if you really like are a rap fan, like that's the tip of the iceberg. Oh, yeah. But Fiona and Mike are fucking adorable with their banter, and he offers to let her leave some of her stuff at his place. And she's surprisingly open with Mike about everything going on with Frank, and he says that he suspects that she does give a shit, despite her protests the contrary, which she so does. Oh, She yeah. so gives a shit. Oh, my God. She cares so much. Um, And apparently they're having dinner at his parents' house tonight. Which, Ooh. like, moving fast if this is just a week-long relationship, but... It's not, though. It's been, well, it's been a couple months. Yeah, no, you're right, because... Because time isn't real. <laughs> time is not real, so true. Well, yep. Uh, <laughs> like, that's so weird, even. It's, like, the family business, so she's not just meeting his parents. Like, she's meeting, like, her boss. Bad and her bosses. Yeah. Her boss. Yeah, because the sister's involved. Yeah. Um. So, Sheila is babysitting Liam, and Fiona calls when she gets to work to check in. And Sheila says that Debbie is helping her operate her iPad and that she's getting into Christian Mingle to try and meet a decent man. Which, good for Sheila. Good for yeah, Sheila. Yeah, good for Sheila. I love her. Like, she's like, yes, Christian Mingle. Debbie comes downstairs for breakfast and there's no food in the house, so she eats ice cream. For breakfast. Uh, for breakfast. And so Sheila gave Carl money for groceries, but she will not be seeing that money or those groceries ever again. Watching the consistent of this show of people being like, here's money, go buy me something. Uh, You're never seeing you ain't that money that back. <laughs> you ain't never getting it back. Right? Especially with a Gallagher child. Well, because it's like, you would expect Carl, like the younger kids to be like, okay, like, yep, like, I'll go get you groceries. But nope, yeah. they are prioritizing themselves always. Well, to be fair, like when 
Sheila gave Frank money way back earlier in like season two and she was like, go get groceries. Oh, yeah. And he spent the money. He still came home with groceries. Yeah, he stole it from the Gallagher yeah, house. Yeah, he stole them from the Gallagher's house. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, she didn't know that. <laughs> So Sheila, who found out that she's one thirty second Native American, matched with a Native American guy on a dating app, and Debbie mm-hmm. said to ask him if he's DTF, down to fuck. Obviously, we yeah. know. But Sheila doesn't, and neither does Debbie. She's like, I don't know. Ask him if he's DTF. She doesn't. She's like, she's like, I don't know. I heard Holly and Ellie say it. <laughs> God, I hate that. I hate this teenage girl so much, but I hate <laughs> her so much. Well, it's the like worst. I feel bad for her, but she's also evil. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, Carl, Carl and Frank are stalking Sammy, and we see her and her son come out of the trailer, and Carl says, she looks like the skank version of you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Such true. Okay, I will say, Sammy, like, like in season four, and like kind of in the really early, really early part of season five, I kind of fucked with her. I was like, okay, Sammy, like, well, because she was- Before all of the stuff with Carl- I was like, I like you. I was like, I like you. Like, annoying as fuck. But I was like, you're bringing some things to the table. Right, like, she was annoying and, like, she was mean to Sheila. But I was like, well, everybody's mean to somebody. And then and then when, like, she was getting pissy with Frank, like, when she shot Frank, I was like, yep, she's doing the thing. She's doing the right thing. And then everything happened with Carl. And I was like, okay. I also just hate Not Chucky mm-hmm. so much. Like, I hate right Chucky. Away. I hate him immediately. <laughs> I hated Chuggy, but I fucked with Sammy a little at the beginning. And Frank says that he has to charm her and tells Carl to give him the grocery money for weed. Probably just, like, manage his pain so that he's, like, not being weird in front of her. Oh, yeah. No, he pr- he fully is like, I am in pain and I need weed. Like, yeah. yeah. So true, King. And he's, what is, it's, like, something, like, Carl only has, like, $15, $20 and Frank's, like, that's not gonna give me fucking anything. <laughs> it's, yeah. like, sucks to be you. you. like, a shitty eighth. <laughs> yeah. Over to Lip doing his work study job in the school kitchen. He's late and getting yelled at by his boss. Um, and then at Kevin V's house, she's showing Carl her ultrasound, saying, "Which baby looks like one of them?" She's like, "Isn't she like this one looks like Kev? This one looks like me, and this one looks like both of us." <laughs> yeah, they're literal um, blobs on a sonogram. <laughs> they're literally just like white little specks on a paper. Yeah. Um, he says that he wants drugs for Frank, and she says, "No more freebies." And he goes. What happened to Ghetto Nurse? And he- she became a capitalist. <laughs> She's got four fucking babies on the way. That's what happened to Ghetto yeah, Nurse. Yeah, <laughs> like, come on. So Carl offers to sell Oxy for her at school, and she says no and kicks him out so she can leave for work. So naturally, he just breaks back into the house through the window to try and just steal the drugs. Yeah. But it's like, and he doesn't think she's going to notice that he smashed the window of her medicine cabinet. Yeah, literally. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Um, back to Frank, who walks into a dispensary and spends the grocery money on shitty weed and a few edibles. So at this time, did he have a med card when he went in there? I don't know, because if weed was... Because le- weed? Weed wasn't legal in Chicago until the last season. Oh, wait, no, he did. He did have a med card. He had a med card? Oh, it was like some random... Yeah, I think it was some random guy's name, because I think she reads it out or he hands it to her, and it's like very obviously not Frank. Yeah, but she takes pity on him. Like some like some more ethnic name or something, and he's like, yep, that's me, born and bred. <laughs> um, yeah, because weed being legal in Chicago for like people 21 and over was like a big plot point in season 11. Yeah. So I was like, timeline, uh, that doesn't make sense. It was medicinally available, Yeah. Yeah. So over to Debbie, who's ranting about Maddie and every little thing about him. And it would be cute if he wasn't 20 years old while she was still Uh, 13. Yeah, like if this was just a teenager who had a stupid little crush on another teenager, this storyline wouldn't suck. It would have been kind of cute. But this is a teenager and a grown man. And a grown man who won't say anything. Well, it's also the fact that he's fucking indulging it because she's like, I'm 13. And he's like, okay, we can't date. But they're still hanging out. But then he'll hold his ha- her hand and like... And he the, holds her ugh. hand. I don't like it. And he and he likes the attention... Because he likes the attention that she gives him because he can't fucking get a girlfriend of his own. Has she stayed over his place at this point? Has she stayed I over? I think that's tonight. I think that's this episode. Okay. But like exactly. Yeah. Like yeah. he is... It's not like he's grooming him... Grooming her unconsciously in a way. Yeah. Well, because he thinks he's trying to get away from her. Because Seema, Seema doesn't happen until later yeah. in the season. Yeah. And so it's like he thinks that he's trying to help her, 
Yeah, like just just being, a, and he's just being a friend, or like that he's that he's like keeping his distance, but he's really not. I was saying this in the first episode, like when they met, how old does he think this girl is? But if there is even a question of how old is she, she's too young for you. Yep. But yeah. like I could have given him even a mild little bit of a pass until she literally told him she was thirteen, and he didn't say get the fuck out of my house. The way that she acts, it's like you're not annoyed. You're not like. This kid's, like, she's seeming yeah, like, a little immature. There's always, like, a situation where there's, like, a grown-up and a younger kid. And there can be a time where it's not inappropriate. And it can just be, like, a banter-type situation. Like, we see that in this show plenty of times. But it's the fact that she is actively pursuing him. He knows it. And he's letting it continue and already crossing that boundary in their relationship. Because if they were just buddies, I feel like they could have written that fine but it's the fact that he knows she likes him and she's continuously altering herself or like her way around him for him to be like my bestie and i think it's just fucking bullshit on the writer's part they like this storyline of debbie like trying to lose her virginity and not being good with boys could have waited a few seasons like it did not have to happen right now they there had to have been something else interesting to go on with debbie for a season or two until she was at least 15, 16, age appropriate enough to be having this kind of storyline. Yeah. Well, also like to have the baby and or, like to have Franny and stuff because that this all leads to Franny. But it's like, okay, like I can sort of see why Maddie did not make his exit in season four because it's like he's trying to push her away and then she's like, my sister's in jail. My dad is dying. My brother overdosed. Like, and she's, and she's like coming to him for help because mm-hmm. he's like, He's like a friend, but he's also, you know, an adult and he can drive her around. Shameless loves that parallel of some of the Gallagher's running to someone crying, being like, I don't know where to go. Right. And so if if I was Maddie, I would be like, oh, my God, I can't abandon her now. Like, like she's she's like helpless because she's a little girl. But then when it came time to season five and they were still talking, I was like, nope, he's fucked up. Something fucked up with him. Yeah, I think like like. On all counts, it's just, it's a bullshit storyline. It's a bullshit Mm storyline. And, like, they make Debbie just fucking evil about it, like, right away. Instead of, like, she is, she is the victim in this situation, but then they make her fucking evil. And it's it's also, like, they, like, Shameless has, like, a, a pattern of Gallagher's being taken advantage of sexually by older people or romantically, and then them never, like, them, like, going to the ends of the earth to defend it. And then, like, in season 11, like, you have this whole storyline with Tammy where she's like, yep, I was groomed by a teacher and he, you know, took advantage of me. And they never show the aftermath of that conversation with Mm -hmm. Ian because it's like she doesn't talk to Ian, but it's like, I wish she would have. I wish she would have talked to Debbie. Like, I just... Like, remember when Debbie was having, like, an innocent little flirtation with the kid that we thought was Kev's son? If there was just another teenage boy for her to, like, have an innocent little thing with, and maybe she, like, tries to do things that are too appropriate, too too advanced for people their age, then they could, like, be just having weird puberty, thinking about sex moments. Well, they have the thing with the kid in the bathroom stall and she's like, he's like, I've never gotten a handjob before. And she's like, I've never given a handjob before. And they're like in the bathroom stall and she's like, should we turn the lights off or whatever? And then they have that thing with that basketball player who, and we're getting ahead of ourselves, but she ends up being like Seema's stepbrother or whatever. And they're just blackmailing her or like embarrassing her. He just like came up to her, like be like, do you want to be my lab partner? If they wanted to have, like, a Debbie going through puberty, figuring out her body, figuring out things situation at this point, doing it, like, it being an innocent thing between two teenagers maybe doing mildly inappropriate things because they're trying to figure shit out would have been so much more interesting than a fucking 20-year-old and 13-year-old Debbie. Than feeling uncomfortable. Well, and also because they're trying to, like, emulate the adults in their lives. Like, they're like, we should be having sex right now. Well, because they kind of do that with, like, with, like, Carl and Bonnie when he, like, takes his shirt off and she's like, I don't like sex. Yeah. Like, I don't want to. And he's like, oh, okay. We can just be kids about this. Yeah, like, they found a way to do those kind of stories with Carl in a way that they could not figure out how to do them with Debbie. Back to the episode, anyway. Holly asks when they're going to have sex, and Debbie says soon, and that Maddie hasn't asked yet. Her friends give her terrible advice that she be, that she should not be taking. Yeah. I also hate these girls. I hate I these do. girls so much. I attribute Debbie's downfall to them, primarily. 
at work at the cup place, Mike sends Fiona a link to an Al Anon group that his whole family went to. And she says that she'll deal with her family shit in her own way. And Mike counters that if her way works well, why can't he stay at her place? But yeah, because he's like, well, because he's talking about Robbie when it comes to like the Al Anon stuff. But he doesn't like mention who. He's like, oh, my family went to Al Anon. Just my, yeah. And like earlier in the episode when she was, when he was trying to give her a drawer, she was like resisting to it. Then he's like, okay, then we could stay at your place. And she's like, absolutely fucking not. There's too much shit happening at my place. So he's like, well, if the way that you're handling your life works, why can't I stay at your place? And like, man, it's complicated. Yeah. Um. So Fiona has met her match and says that she'll drop off some stuff at his place tomorrow. Back to Carl, who's using his puffy coat to grocery shop in his own special way. He's shoplifting. I love him in that jacket. He looks so small. He looks so little. <laughs> He's like a little bit. He's literally just shoving cans of soup and, and things of bread and everything in that enormous coat. Not discreet at yeah. all. Not discreet at all. Homeboy could have been caught. No, in but it's like, yeah. And then he goes, I think he goes with just like diapers at the counter. And the lady's a little suspicious. And asks if Liam is his kid, and he says, yeah, I'm not afraid to knock a bitch up, you game. <laughs> I hate him so much, but he's so funny. And I love him. <laughs> and this is a, this is kind of a really good Carl episode, if I'm if I'm being honest. Carl pulls some heavy episodes in season four. He really pulls his weight in this season. Well, because he's like, I'm in I I'm an agent of chaos. <laughs> well, and it seems like if if Lisa Morales also wrote on Uncle Carl and Carl's first sentencing, she's written on some great Carl episodes. She likes she she took Carl out and was like, I'm gonna she's, give She's well, she's the only one who ever paid him any attention. I know. She was like, I'm gonna give him a personality besides being fire and explosions. He has such a personality in these episodes. He is caring and sweet and he's ah, uh, and it's like, damn, why didn't they do this for the other like, ones? The more honestly, Carl with adults flows better than Carl with kids, and she puts him with like almost every adult in this like season because we get a bunch of V content, we get a lot of Frank content, like we get like Sheila content. Like, thank you, Carl. Think no, thank you, Lisa. Lisa Morales, the silent savior we never knew we had. Yeah. So Carl asks Liam for ideas on how to get drug money, and Liam points out the doggy outside. Well, because he's literally just like doggy. doggy. Yeah. Um, Liam, or Lip gets back to his room and is in a rush to get to class. Amanda's still being rude, but Lip truly does not have time to care. And he asks Ron if he can borrow his laptop because the library computers have been taken over by gamers because he has like a paper to write. And yeah. Ron says, yeah, but why don't you get a shitty Chromebook? It's only like $200. He's really trying to be helpful. He is. He's like, yeah. he's like, you could just get a shitty Chromebook if that's all you need it for. And Ron does not understand that $200 in Lip's world is like an actual fortune. Yeah, Lip's like, oh, how much is it? $200? Yeah, after I buy a fucking mansion, I will go and purchase that Chromebook. Like it is, $200 is a world away for Lip. Yeah. Um, and Lip then borrows Amanda's spray deodorant and she's pissed. <laughs> I love he puts on like that dove shit. <laughs> He'd be yeah, I mean, like an ocean. smells good, smells good, smells good. I wear Old Spice. It's so funny. He's like, oh, that's nice. She's like, oh my God, that's mine. And well, because so she just came back from the shower, but she's like in their room, right? She's got her little shower caddy. Yeah, she's like in a, she's yeah. like in her little towel and he just like grabs it and he's like, Psh. yeah. And it's like, girl, what are you doing? Go to your own dorm. Like, I don't care if that's your boyfriend. Like, now, doesn't know. she have an apartment off campus? No, that's not until the next season. She lives in a dorm room yeah. this season. Um, so then Lip steals a bike as he has wanted to do. And rides it to class. That's my favorite, most consistent thing about Lip is that he got he gonna steal a bike. <laughs> yeah, well, he's like transportation. Um, and then cut to Carl putting up lost dog posters all around the neighborhood. Back to Lip, he gets to class late, and the teacher seems annoyed. And Lip even has to borrow the board marker because his pen isn't. He working. like gets up in the middle of class, walks to the front, grabs it off the whiteboard, and then goes sits down. He's like, "Go ahead." <laughs> well, yeah, he's like, he's like, thanks. Well, he's killing himself trying to keep up, but it's also like, Lip, you could have prepared better. Yeah. He could have. No, but he like- He could have prepared but better. like, the whole thing of it is, like, everybody in his class is, like, taking their notes on a laptop, and he's got, a notebook. like, a notebook and, and a pen. And one pen that doesn't and work. And his pen ran out of ink. And it's like, and yeah. it's like, I understand that he's like, I had my work-study job, like, I was running late, all this stuff, but it's like, Lip, bring your school stuff to your job in the morning. Bring everything yeah. you need for the day. That's what I do. And I bet the cafeteria is so close to his classes. Um, so anyway, over to fucking Chucky. <laughs> uh, <laughs> fucking this kid. 
Frank gives a teenager. I hate this yeah, movie. Frank gives a teenager a joint to bully Chucky, so Frank can step in front, like in front of Sammy, and be okay. The good but guy. this is actually so funny. He's <laughs> and it is funny because he's he's like he's like you know hit him a little harder, and then he does. He's like, oh my god, why would you do that? That is so fucked up. Can you see how helpless this little kid is? I love the way he like said it to the kid. He's like, I'll give you this joint. You beat that kid up. Not too bad. He's my grandson. But like, <laughs> smack him around yeah. a little bit. <laughs> And it works, because Sammy's so grateful that she offers to buy Frank cheese fries, so he goes out to lunch with them. Also, side note, I could fuck up some cheese fries right now. Oh my god, that sounds so good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wonder what I'm going to have for dinner. It's about dinner time. I have to make dinner soon. I don't know, my roommate's having chicken and rice right now. Fiona gets home from work to a freezing cold reception from her siblings, and Debbie makes Fiona pull teeth to get info about her boyfriend. Like, she's really trying to get her to, like... She's really trying to get her to open up about it, and Debbie is not having it. She's like, who are you texting? She's like, no one. And she's like, and she's like, no is one. that your boyfriend? Maddie. Blah, blah, blah. She's like, maybe. And Fiona, like, tries to relate to her. She'd be like, one time I found out a girl was kissing my boyfriend, so I lit her hair on fire in school. And I'm like, what? Well, yeah, and then and Debbie's like, can you get off my ass? Uh, and Fiona moves on, and he she tries with Carl, and he doesn't even get mad about the dog, but he is, she doesn't get mad about the dog she's like oh you found a dog uh but he is icing her out about the liver thing so he won't talk to her and then she finds sheila upstairs in her room looking for a scarf or a sweater to borrow so she can send her man friend a picture and fiona's incredibly chill about it and says sorry for being gone two nights in a row with mike but sheila has no problem with it and she even asks to have her man friend come over sheila's so sweet she is gone sweet and she says as long as he doesn't steal our food or piss on our sofa and she fiona he's a christian so was jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs> uh that was a really good that was a really good exchange well it's like you're right so was jeffrey Dahmer. so are half of the pedophiles in go the world. get tattoos because cannibals wait 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 wait, wait, wait. was jeffrey yeah. Dahmer a christian i'm assuming yeah. he was most serial killers most are, well, yeah, are gemini's too well it's the serial killer at <laughs> all <laughs> cannot believe that he's fucking from ohio like but yeah, get yourself covered in tattoos because Jeffrey Dahmer says they taste bad and he doesn't eat people with tattoos. Evan's got it covered. So a cannibal won't eat you. Yeah, I gotta, no I gotta get on cannibals home. coming after me. Well, yeah, and and he wants to eat men. So females, Not me. back off. This one's for the boys. Well, and it's like, well, where's where's the lesbian cannibal? <laughs> um, <laughs> ladies. Mommy, sorry. Mommy, sorry. <laughs> Eating you is a different thing. Ah, uh, yup. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. That was, good. That, was, that was gorge. That was a that great was a good one. one. <laughs> um, so we're out to dinner with Sammy and Chucky and Frank, and Sammy's telling a story about her ex posting revenge porn on the internet, and she says that she's had three husbands. Doesn't she say later she's like, I've been married three times and engaged twelve? Yeah. Yes. Or married six times and engaged twelve? I don't she's know. She's been married Something so many like times. That. She's like she's she's like talking to like I think like Debbie or something. She's talking and to she's Debbie. Like it's in four oh eight. I know it's in four oh eight. She's talking to Debbie. She's trying to get give her advice on how to like get Maddie back. Yeah, yeah. she's giving her advice on like how to uh, be like cute and sexy. Yeah, and she's like and she's like, that's why I've been married three times and engaged twelve. And Debbie's like She's like, bring them for her money. That's all she basically Sammy says. Yeah. <laughs> um and it's kind of weird. Because we know that Frank is her dad. She does not know that. Um, Frank is served butterscotch ice cream and he sends it away because he hates it. And so does Sammy. It turns out that they have a lot in okay, common. But what restaurant is defaultly serving butterscotch ice cream? I think they just served him the wrong uh, cup. Yeah. Like it was somebody else's. But it's also like, well, this, this whole trope I find in TV shows a lot about like estranged parents and children when it's like, oh my God, we have like such crazy things in common. It's like, I don't have that much in common with my parents, like, like preferences like that. And most of the ones that I do, it's just because I was raised yeah. that way. I have nothing in common with my dad. Like the only thing me and my mom have in common is that she grew up as a teenager in the eighties. So I enjoy the things she enjoyed as like a young teen, but it's like, we, that's the only, like, it's not like our personalities at all. <laughs> yeah. My dad loves yeah. like spicy stuff and like, and like mushrooms and onions on things. Fucking hate all of that. My mom cannot stand coconut and I love coconut. Like, I yeah, it's like, it's like food preferences. Like, it's just like, that's not yep. really a thing that translates. That doesn't happen. To I, me. I would prefer more if there was, if it was a trope to be like, 
oh my god we look really similar like you know yeah. i love the trope of like when when people are related or they're estranged and then an outside observer sees both of the people like scratching their head the same way and like making the same gestures like yeah, yeah like the same mannerisms and it's like okay i kind of like that one yeah that's more believable than me being like oh my god me and my dad both like coffee oh my god that's so weird we're that we're we're so we're in so, we have so much in common like we're so related or it's like we both like we both like our sandwiches like a certain way it's like that's probably because he raised you yeah. and that's then what you made your food for you like that you so got. that's what you just get yeah exactly yeah. But Sammy takes this having a lot in common to be like chemistry, yeah. romantic chemistry, sexual but chemistry. But nope, that's your daughter. So she, yeah, she gives Chucky some money to go play pinball. And Frank is like, is he autistic? But Sammy says, no, just quiet. And they get along pretty well. And she invites him to Chucky's dodgeball game the next day. What a weird like way to like in, like invite someone that you're kind of trying to pursue. Like, come watch yeah. my son's dodgeball game. Well, it's like, when else does she ever get... She literally never spends any time apart from Chucky. She yeah, like, really you could not be at the dodgeball. Also, what a weird fucking sport. That Chucky plays intramural dodgeball. It's not <laughs> It's not soccer. It's not softball. It's not basketball. It's dodgeball. Well, he's an indoor kid. Well, okay, to be fair, it's an indoor sport, and it's winter. So it's not really like they can go outside. Yeah. And he's a short, round little dude. He's not playing basketball. Yeah, so he can't play basketball. Like, you know, it's just, I don't know. But it's probably really cheap, too, yeah. to play intramural because you don't need to buy equipment or anything. You literally just use the balls. Anyway, over to another family dinner. Fiona looks great and is, she looks gorgeous in this episode. Yeah, so let's just, Emmy looks, in this episode, Emmy looks drop dead gorgeous. She's it's so fucking pretty. insane uh redefined women <laughs> she redefined women i saw her i was like yep she's this this is it for like, me now mommy sorry she's the sexiest person <laughs> mommy, i've ever sorry. seen like mommy sorry uh yeah i was like yep this is this is for yes. me now but she's charming the hell out of mike's family and there are people who say grace well I, they're christian They've, bu- they've been to al anon which is like inherently kind of a churchy thing But like it's just so funny they all like they all like reach around the table to grab each other's hands and like a little kid goes to grab Fiona's hand and she's like, uh, I guess, I guess I'm doing this. Like, <laughs> it's like cute, but she's like, like, she's kind of awkward about it. Like the rest of them aren't awkward about it. It's just something they do. But Mike's brother, Robbie walks in late and is immediately more interested, interesting than anyone at that table. And he says he just got back from a retreat with his rehab friends and that he's three years sober. So he was clearly the family member that they all went to Alan on about. I I thought he was just sober from drugs, though, because he, no, he doesn't drink. He says that later when him and Mike and Fiona go out. He's like, I don't drink anymore, so Mike is drinking for Yeah, me. but he, like, does drugs. <laughs> it's it's drugs, it's drugs and alcohol. Oh, no, she's like, she's like, she's like, I thought you were sober. And he's like, oh, just from alcohol, not drugs, though. But no, like, um. Doesn't he say that? No, I, I just want to, like, a thing that I, that Amelia says on Grey's Anatomy. Like, or she was, like, taking in a kid who was addicted to drugs. And she's like, we were just drinking. She's like, hey, you know what? Heroin addicts forget when they are drunk that they're fucking heroin addicts. Because then they get drunk and they do heroin. <laughs> like, yeah, no, yeah. Right. Yeah, no, Mike is, he's just sober from alcohol. Because then when Fiona's, like what the fuck cocaine and he's like i like i thought you were sober and he's like oh i'm sober from alcohol not drugs yeah. though. um and robbie asks to go to the family cabin and they straight up say no and mike and robbie get kind of snippy about it they they get passive aggressive for real but kind of a little more aggressive. yeah they're like throwing daggers at that poor kid yeah they're like yeah he's like what are you worried i'm gonna sell the tv from 1998 like yeah, they probably are a little bit like. And then, yeah. then he like he was like you already tried or something like that. <laughs> yeah, but you're right, Amanda. They are very waspy. Um, and Robbie gets up and leaves, and Mike apologizes, and he he apologizes to Fiona, and she's like, "Hey, family chaos is my status quo. Are we ready to be sad? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Who's ready to be I'm sad? I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna. I'm gonna jump. I'm just gonna. <laughs> I was so upset watching this scene again. I avoid <laughs> this scene at all costs, and it makes me. This one is kind of sad. Is so it is so upsetting. Well, just like the just the cutaway when we'll get to it, but the cutaway with the woman, oof, 
Anyway, we're at the alibi. Kev is putting pay to pee locks on the bathroom doors and Tommy and Kev like snipe back and forth about it. Then out of nowhere, literally seemingly Just nowhere, cuts to a him. Very drunk Mickey, very drunk Mickey comes in and he's like, I like fucking carrot tops with the freckles and the pale skin, fucking alien looking. And Kev is like, kind of thinking for a second. And then he's like, well, you're in luck. There's a redhead checking you out over there. You should buy her a drink. And Mickey says, I don't have to. And he just goes over to her and he's like, want fuck? You want to go bang? And she's like, like, I, I just, I have to, I cannot state enough. It is out of nowhere. No one no is way. talking. He's literally to him. just there. He's like, I'm here. No one is talking to him. Tommy and V were just having a conversation. Kev was, just, and then sitting on his own, drunk off his ass, he just volunteers. I like fucking redheads. Like, <laughs> where did that come from, Mickey? Right. Well, and and she's like, and she's like, do I look busy? But it's also like, okay, nobody else. Except obviously Kev caught on eventually, but it's like, and no one else in this bar was like, hey, you used to hang out with the one redhead we know. Like, you guys worked at that store together and hung out all the time. Crazy, right? So like, weird. And he's like, what? No yeah, way. Like, Kev, that's, this is why I believe, like, by the time we get to 408, no, by the time we get to, like, Emily, by the time we get to Emily, Kev has figured it out. Yeah. Like, He's figured it oh, out, yeah. and it's it's. I don't think it is until he sees the two of them in the same place with each other that he's like, "Oh, all of that shit makes sense now." He's like, like "Oh, he's like, what? <laughs> yep." He's like, "That's who Ian's talking about." That's who Mickey was talking about. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Well, and but what comes before is, um, when Kev robs Mickey, and Ian is the one who kind of like talks him down from fucking with yeah. him. So anyway. Amanda, you're right. Noel does look he good. He looks so good. <laughs> he looks so good. I hate he looks so good when Is he's Is that sad. when he's wearing the long sleeve? He looks pretty good. Season four was a really good era for him. He's wearing the long sleeves and like and the, the gray, the gray cutoff hoodie. He's wearing, he's wearing, yeah, and like the gray undershirt with the blue hoodie. It's a hoodie that's kind of like hanging off of his shoulder. Mm, and yeah. like, it's just, his hair is just a little bit fucked up. It looks good. Like, it looks yeah. the most natural his hair's ever looked, because normally it looks fake as fuck, and you can tell that it's black and not real. But that one? Well, because it's like so yeah, slick back. Yeah, but this one looks good. He looks sexy. Like, he's like, why don't you, why don't you buy that girl a drink? And he's like, because I don't fucking have to. I and like, have looking to, like he, that? No, you he don't. he knows he's a beast. You absolutely don't have to buy her a drink looking like that because you look like that right now. So then it, V start, tries to sell her drugs to the bar patrons at $5 a pill. And they're like, what the fuck? Not a good deal. Um, and we learned that Carol is not speaking to V anymore since, you know, her demanding get an abortion. abortion. And I also hate this woman that Mickey is having sex with. Like she's, she's so, so annoying. Loud. The lollipop. So get that loud. lollipop out of there. Her sex noises are just like she sounds like it, like a donkey. <laughs> well, it's like what else did we expect? He walked over and said, "Hey, you want to fuck?" And she said, "Do I look busy?" Yeah. But like it also is like the vibe is just so weird. Like it's a it's a slow pan. It's a very dramatic moment looking at his face, and then there's a her just making those noises in the scene. She's just yeah, she's making evil noises. But it's also like, well, okay, isn't it kind of like? No, I don't want to get too into this oh, no. right now because it's actually embarrassing. Well, because it's like the intricacies of their relationship in season three and like obviously like how intimate they were with each other in terms of like because obviously in the beginning it was like all about sex and so it was like okay just like you know it was a very physical thing yeah but then they started getting kind of intimate with it and so it's like this lady it's going back to just being like just a very physical thing instead of the intimacy mm. yeah like he's just trying to pretend and then even like they have sex and then she's like do you want to finish he bends over and he's like, pound me with your hip bones. And like, he's trying so hard. He's trying so hard, but he is so fucking sad. He's so sad. Well, and it's like, he can't pretend. Yeah. Because it's it's not intimate. Like, it's not, there's no feeling behind it. He can't even pretend like he is having feeling because just the way that it's moving is like, and the fact that he's topping and not bottoming. Yeah. Anyway. So, yeah, I mean, like you said, she finishes and is like, you didn't finish and he's like i want you to fuck me like she's like with what pound me with your hip bone like pound my ass 
And then he just kind of like, she does it. And he's just kind of like, is bent over the sink, just kind of looking like And she's like yelling well. over him like, yeah, get it. Well, yeah, and she's like making noises again. And it's like, Ian never did that. <laughs> and like, he's just, he's punishing himself and he's trying so hard. He's so sad. Yeah. Ian was never that cringe. <laughs> Ian's cringe now. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, Gallagher Kitchen. Frank comes in and blends up his fish and chips while Sheila watches just absolutely horrified. And he looks like shit. He looks mm-hmm. awful. But it's also like, yeah, it's just funny that it was just a funny little side bit. Yeah, it's it's those little moments of Bill and Joan. He's like, he keeps putting, yeah. he keeps putting the ingredients in the blender and she's like, oh. And like the water. Oh and she's just like, she's like, oh, Frank. And she goes, she goes, oh, Frank, don't. <laughs> and he just starts <laughs> drinking it. And she's like, and she just goes, oh. She's just sitting at the table, just watching from afar. Uh, She's like, what is this? What's happening? That's so disgusting. Oh, Frank, don't. (laughs) Frank. And she's like, and she's like, no. (laughs) No, Frank, don't. And then he, and then she's just like, oh, the way that Joan does. Anyway, (laughs) Um, she's also horrified, not just at the blended fish and chips. But the dick pics that she's getting from men on her dating app. Because she keeps on sending them DTF because she doesn't know what it yeah. means. DTF? DTF. And Fiona gets a call from Lip and updates him on the life of the kids. And he asks if he can borrow the family laptop. But Fiona says that the kids use it for school and that Carl uses it for porn. Mm-hmm. And she kind of hears something in his voice and asks if he's okay. And they kind of admit to each other that they're not doing so great. But she hears a party in the background and assumes that she's keeping him from it. So she's like, okay, you can go. But Lip's not at the party. He's in his room while the door's open trying to do his homework. And there's a party going on in the hallway. And Ron is having sex with Amanda. And it's like, I know you know he's awake. Like, he's sitting over there doing his homework. He's right there. They He's right there. He Like, and they didn't even, they probably weren't even like, hey, dude, can you leave the room for a little bit or something like that? Like, literally nothing like that. It was literally just, they just came and started having sex. If my roommate ever tried to have sex with me in the room, like, fucking studying, I- Not even a partition. Yeah. Right? Like, I would just be like- Absolutely not. Well, also, lip. It's like, why are you not leaving? (laughs) Like, go find somewhere else to study. Like, my sweet mates felt weird having their boyfriends over- when I was in a sweet, a whole bathroom door away. Like, no, it's weird. Yeah, no, like when I, so I'm in an apartment right now and we all have separate bedrooms, but when I was in a different apartment in the winter and we also had separate bedrooms and I had a, I was in the, a relationship at the time, it was so weird bringing my, bringing my partner over. I was like, this is uncomfortable for me and my roommate and I have separate bedrooms. That's so funny because I live at Sebastian's apartment <laughs> with him and his roommate. <laughs> and we're all besties. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I and I was always over at her apartment too, like just hanging out. And like, I would feel so weird. I would feel so weird there. Like Amanda too. It's like, how do you not get uncomfortable? I felt so weird being there when, when her roommate was there. I would be like, I, we, we have to sit in the living room and like sit next to each other and not touch each other at all. <laughs> like, yeah, like when I lived in a dorm like that, there was literally just a bedroom with two beds in it. And that's, that was your dorm room. Yeah. But like I had a roommate that was really good. She had her boyfriend over. He slept over sometimes, but like they would wait until like his roommate also had a girlfriend. So sometimes his roommate would go to his girlfriend's place and they would go sleep over at his place and do their thing over there. When he was with us, he was just hanging. But then I also had a shitty roommate who had a boyfriend that literally lived in our room for three weeks until I screamed and yelled at her. And I was like, he sh- he cannot fuck. He doesn't even go to the school. What the fuck is he doing here? And she. <laughs> me, me, me at yeah. Sebastian's school. <laughs> she ended up moving out. <laughs> me when I don't go to that college. Yeah, they're, Sebastian's roommates are like, uh, but they like no, you. We're besties. <laughs> but anyway, Alexa was a good roommate and Jess sucked. <laughs> yeah. So another big fat liar paper writing montage for Lip. Yeah, just like the just like the speech essay writing, and he stays up all night to write this paper. Um, and then at work with Fiona the next day, Mike has invited Robbie to dinner with them. And so she kind of makes fun of him and his family over like throwing money at the Robbie problem instead of cutting him off. And he makes the case that Robbie was his protector when they were kids, so he doesn't mind being Robbie's right now. Well, so is Robbie older? Yeah. Robbie is older than him, yeah. Yeah. And so, like, apparently they had a really good relationship when they were kids. And he's like, and then Robbie got fucked up, and I'm mad at him, but I don't mind being his caretaker right now. It's that the sister, so they have a sister, too. She's either the oldest or the baby. Or, like, the middle kid. No, is she is she not older than... I think Mike's the baby. Yeah, I think Mike is the baby. Yeah. I feel like the sister's the oldest. I don't think she's the middle. I don't see Robbie as being the oldest sibling. 
Robbie being a middle child makes a lot of sense. Yep. Yep. As a middle child, I sign that off. Yeah, as a middle child, I'm like, yep, I see him. Yeah, that would make more sense than anything. And plus him being the older brother, so that makes sense why... It makes sense why Robbie... I mean, why Mike also attached on the Robbie, because he's, like, the older brother, too. Right, like, yeah. it's kind of like Ian and Lip. Yep, and then the older sister. Oh, my God, just like Ian, Lip, and Fiona. Ah! Crazy. Um, so back to Lip. He's asking his boss if he can leave early so he can study. Uh, which is always the priority with work study jobs, but his boss says no. His boss is a dick. Yeah, but his boss also does get kind of like, well, and I know Amanda's like, he does the stupid boomer shit of telling Lip he needs to play in his day better while also denying him extra time to study. But it's also like, you got put on a schedule. No, but here's the thing. Like, it's... It's a job that's taking advantage of him. It's a job that knows it's supposed to be a work-study job, but they're like, but we're going to fill you up with hours, and then when you ask us for time off, we're going to call you fucking lazy. Like That is true. I Aren't you not supposed to work more than, like, 20 hours? Yeah, you're not supposed to be full-time. Yeah, like, they're going to fill him up with hours because they know he's desperate for the money, but then when he asks for time off to do the school thing that he's supposed to be doing, they're like, fuck you, we filled you up with hours. Like, Yeah, and it's it doesn't even look like they're understaffed or anything. Like, they seem fine. But Lip goes outside and kicks a dumpster for like a minute. And then he gathers himself and goes back inside. And then he goes back inside. <laughs> He's doing a really good job at like regulating himself. He's like, I'm doing my shit. I'm keeping it together. I'm going to go kick a dumpster about this. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to do my shit. Like, yeah, he's like, he's like, I'm normal again. <laughs> Um, so then we go and join Frank and Sammy as they watch Chucky get fucking obliterated in dodgeball. They beat that shit out of that kid. Isn't it like in slow motion too? It's so funny. It's so funny. And it's like, yes, beat the shit out of this kid. It's so funny. I hate this kid so oh much. It's so funny. Well, it's just like, oh, it's like, yeah, get his ass. <laughs> Get, get his, his ass. ass. He's a little, he's a little roly-poly knock him over. See him roll around. It's so funny. And it's like this gigantic <laughs> kid. Yes. Well, doesn't he literally start turtling? He's like, <laughs> it's like, no. Don't. It's so funny. Uh, oh my God. Good. And Frank lights up a joint in this indoor gym full of children. It's in a school and no one says anything. But it's like, okay, like. Okay, light up next to me. Get into it. Like, okay, Frank. Like, Yes. <laughs> Um, and she says that she was married to an addict and she can't go through that again. So she's like, are you addicted? And he's like, no, my doctor sanctioned, shanks, sanctioned it for pain management, which is a half lie. Uh, he didn't get it from yeah. his doctor, but his doctor did say smoking weed yeah. would help. And like, he is an addict, but this is not that. He is yeah. an addict. Yeah. It's like him. <sighs> yeah. And yeah. then he tells her that he's in pain because he needs new liver. And she kind of sits with that. Uh, back at the Gallagher's, Sheila is cleaning the place and Carl comes home with more dogs that he wants to try to return for rewards. There's like seven. <laughs> it's also like the fact that he's putting up found dog posters with rewards on them. He should be waiting for lost dog posters. Yeah. To turn up. Like, why is he like asking money for someone's found dog is like not seen. Right. Like people are just gonna be like, okay, obviously you're trying to take advantage of me. Yeah, uh, like, it's gonna be like, uh, yeah. you stole my dog. I didn't yeah. lose it. And Sheila tells him to take it upstairs because she has her date coming over. And she's wearing one of Fiona's sweaters and she looks so cute. Doesn't she have a little belt on? She's like, I'm a little girl. She's wearing Fiona's, like, polka dot black and gray sweater. She looks yes. so cute. Yeah, doesn't, well, because she knows that he's Native American. Yeah. Doesn't she have a feather in her hair? Or oh, something? I did not notice. I don't know. I think maybe she does. I think that no. I think that's later when she's like watching the kids. And yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and Debbie comes downstairs and says that she's leaving for a sleepover, but she was too flustered to confirm that that's like real before her date knocks on the door. But it's like okay, just go. Yeah, it's like those kids are in and out. That like it shouldn't be. It's not the uncommon world to be like wait. Where are you going? Right. And she would just be like, okay, like, whatever. And Roger is a very handsome, sweet man. Uh, I feel... Roger running tree. Yeah, I feel whatever about him. Like, he's handsome and he's sweet to her. But the whole thing with the kids, it gets complicated. Oh, yeah. I don't I don't remember, like, much of what happened with him. But initially, I'm like, oh, this is incredibly sweet. Like... But then we end up finding out that, like... He's kind of an asshole. I 100% forgot about that storyline. I completely forgot really? about it. You're going to love it. <laughs> oh, you're going to love it. Anyway, so Fiona and Mike are out to dinner with Robbie, and he orders drinks for the two of them, and he asks how he, how they got together. And Fiona tells, like, the honest camping story of, like, I had a boyfriend at the time, but he tried to kiss me, and then my boyfriend and I broke up, and I just... But if you didn't already know, you know now, because of the tension that Fiona is going to fuck this guy. Fiona's going to fuck this guy. Like... She's going to... 
fuck this guy. Fiona's gonna fuck this guy. She's gonna cheat on her boyfriend with his brother. They make some eye contact and I'm like, oh, Fiona's gonna fuck this guy. Her also just laying down that like, she was like, oh, we kind of had a thing when I still had a boyfriend. He was like, oh, so. Oh, so you're that type of girl. You're gonna bang me. Yeah. So then we go to Frank and Frank walks Sammy and Chucky home and they're having fun and being silly and Sammy invites Frank in and they put Chucky to bed and Sammy compliments Frank. Oh, uh, I don't know if we mentioned, but Sammy and Chucky live in a little RV just like parked. They live like in, in a trailer and it's like they have one bed. Like it's literally one room. They all sleep together, but Sammy compliments Frank and then she's like, what's your blood type? She's also O positive and she offers to give him her liver. And he tells her no. And I agree. I don't think it's part of the con. I really think he got to know her. And then he, when she offered her liver, he's like, wait a minute. But wait, like, I think he had a, a brief moment of clarity. Like Frank often does occasionally in his like little fucked up mind. He's like, oh, I'm in too deep. Well, because they were kind of, they were bonding and laughing. And she has a very similar sense of humor to him that he was like, I kind of like this girl. Yeah. And he had like no hand in raising her. So he didn't get to see her being annoying. Like, <laughs> and like he's, he's getting sentimental. He's old and he's dying. And he's like finding this girl that he, that is his daughter. And like, I think it's, it's one of those brief moments of Frank clarity going like, wait, but this isn't a con anymore. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Uh, remember when they brought Queenie in, in season six? Uh, she was kind of fun. Queenie. She was kind of fun. I loved her. Yeah. Evan and I alienating Amanda by talking about season six. She was kind of fun. She was really fun. No, I didn't like, obviously, Frank in that whole situation, but I loved her. She was great. Well, because her whole thing with, like, the commune was really fun. So then Sammy jumps in in this moment and kisses him, and he uses his pain to get out of it. He's He's like, like, "Ah, oh, my God, I'm having such pain right now. I can't kiss you anymore. And then we go back to Fiona, Mike, and Robbie. Mike is hammered. And Robbie's driving them home. He's like stumbling. No, he's, this is what they're, they're in the car and he's like singing. They're in the car. He's hanging over the back seat and he's singing to them. Because at dinner, they weren't going to order drinks. And then Robbie was like, no, please drink. I want, I want to live through you. So like, he just kept ordering Mike drinks. He bought them like a bottle of wine. No, because Mike was having like a regular, like a whiskey, like a one whiskey, just whatever. And then, and then Mike, and then Robbie ordered them a bottle of wine. Yeah. And then they continued to order more alcohol. And like, I honestly think as Robbie saw in Fiona's eyes, I'm going to fuck this girl. And he's like, I'm going to get Mike hammered and I'm going to fuck this girl. And put him to bed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so Robbie, so Mike's like hanging over the backseat and he's singing, I can't fight this feeling. Fiona's like, this is adorable. Uh, And again, and again, Emmy looks. (gasps) Oh my God. She looks gorgeous. She looks so good. She looks so gorgeous. She looks so good. Well, she's got her hair all curly. But... Robbie says that he's proud of Mike for finding a nine to five and a cold beer at the end of the week satisfying, but he can't live a boring life like that. And Robbie says that he is the worst kind of addict, that he's addicted to the rush of life. Oh, that sounds like something familiar. Yeah, it's Jimmy. Like Jimmy. <laughs> yeah, it's Jimmy. <laughs> yeah, this is Jimmy and uh, the the chaos junkie of it all. It was the it was like it was the whole thing. It was Jimmy. It was Robbie. It was Sean. Yeah. Right. Yep. Like it was like the chaos junkie, and Fiona. She's also one. Yeah. But. Yeah. He says, we're all addicts, Fiona, just trying to fill a void. Some of us are just better at hiding. And she's kind of like resonating with that. Mm-hmm. She's like, oh, shit. Then at Maddie's house, he's making her dinner and says that he wants to go to culinary school. And then he wants to show her Eraserhead, which is his favorite movie because, of course, it is. Red flag. Yep. <laughs> of course. Uh, oh, my God. I was in film class today. First of all, most evil film class I've ever had today. We were just arguing the whole time. Well, because it was me, <laughs> me and two other girls and this like writing in this writing group. And one guy. Yeah. And he was being such an asshole sometimes. And and we were like, it's okay because we're just kind of all on the same wavelength and he's not. And like, that's fine. But then he was getting really snippy about it. And we were like, I was just looking at these girls. I was like, what the fuck does he think he's doing? Yeah. There was another guy wearing a Borat shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Why is a man, are you blonde and wearing a Borat shirt? <laughs> just saying. He was both. He was blonde and he wore a Borat shirt. Oh my God. Film class is really fun, you guys. Yeah, no, but if his if his favorite movie is a razor head, it's a red flag. If his favorite movie is American Psycho, um, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, Fight Club, or a razor head, it's a red flag. It's a Fight red Club flag. if you're a man, it's Fight Club if you're a man, it's a red flag. Fight Club if you're like not a cis straight man or a woman, green flag. Green flag all the way. Yep. Like so, these are, like Clockwork Orange and Amer- um, American Psycho and Fight Club are some of Zoe's favorite movies, but she likes them for the correct reasons. So they're yeah. not a red flag. Yeah. I also hate to say this hot take and you can cut this out if you want because it might get me in trouble. If you're a woman 
and your favorite movie is Lady Bird, I don't care what your sexuality is, red flag. Yeah, you know red what? Flag. Red flag. If it's your fav, if your if it's your favorite movie, red flag. Yeah, you can like it. You can absolutely like it. If it's your favorite movie, that's a red flag. Yeah. Red flag. So Debbie comes out of Maddie's bathroom in a nighty, which honestly just looks more like a girl's nightgown, like a little like girl's, a like a little she's girl's a nightgown, because she's a little girl, uh, and tries to make a move on him, tries to kiss him. And he shuts it down and he gives every reason under the sun as to why they can't, except for the fact that she's 13 and he's 20. Yeah. Well, because he kind of keeps that whole, like, you're too young away from her until she finally breaks down. She's like, why won't you date me? And he's like, you're too young. But like, yeah, it's straight up. Like, it's so frustrating to me in that scene. He's like, she had, she had told him earlier in the scene that she was 13. And then in this scene, he's like, well, we can't for, for this reason. And for that reason, like, no, we can't because you're 13 years old. No, because you're a child. Cause he's like, try not to make her feel bad for like something. She can't change her age, but it's like, no, she should feel bad. Yeah. She should feel embarrassed. She should feel silly. Yeah. Like, don't you feel silly? So he puts a sweater around her shoulders and he turns on a razor head and they just kind of sit and watch. Um, but from the nightmare date over to Sheila and Roger hanging out, Carl brings home more dogs and Roger serenades Sheila with his guitar. And then upstairs, Carl tells Frank that he can't afford the drugs from V anymore, so he stole the dogs for ransom. <laughs> uh, and Frank says that he might have found a liver with Sammy. Then at Mike's place, Fiona and Robbie bring an absolutely sloshed Mike inside and Robbie tells stories of Mike's ex-wife, Eve, and then he asks if she's the sticking around type or the screwing around type. And she says that he's a gazillion times more sane than her last man, so she's happy. And he asks if she is really, and she says, yeah. And then they have some little more banter, and then the boom, they're kissing. Yeah. They, boom, it happens so fast. When he hoists her up onto the fucking thing. And, and he tears her, her tights, tights open. Oh, my God. I like, you, like, have to watch that scene in slow motion. I, like, went back and, like, I am like, missing so things. Fast. I am missing like, things. Like, oh, my God. He is, okay. Well, and it's, like, looking at Emmy, looking at Emmy, and you're, like, yep. NSFW, yep. even though we talk about this, but he is in her in a split, in a split second. second. Yeah, he's, like, he's in her. Yeah. Um, I hope she, they didn't tear a single thing. Homegirl, I hope you were wet and slip and slide ready. Like, Yeah, no, <laughs> she must be wet as hell. Their chemistry but is off the fucking charts, it's too. So it's, like, good. almost as good as her chemistry was with Justin. Like, I went back and watched, like, the buildup of, like, right before it happened. I'm like, oh, my God. Oh my God. And don't even get me started on Strangers on a Train. <sighs> oh, Stranger on a Train when he fingers her <sighs> on the train. I'm going so to projectile vomit. <laughs> but also it's like, Robbie, why as a man are you a redhead? <laughs> why as a drug addict are you a redhead? <laughs> this is so clearly supposed to be like, hey, you remember that hot sex in the kitchen she had with Jimmy in the first episode? It's a parallel. Yeah, it's, yeah. yeah absolutely. Um, and it's a great sex scene. Uh, and then Mike kind of like stumbles to the bathroom. And they and they're quiet. She she like covers his mouth and she covers her own mouth. She's yeah, like, he is inside of her and she is on the yeah. Counter. And they're just they just kind of stop. And Mike stumb- stumbles to the bathroom, starts throwing up, and they kind of realize what they did. And Robbie pulls out and just leaves the apartment, leaving a stunned Fiona just kind of like sitting there. Also, didn't finish. Neither of them finished. Yeah, but like but. it's literally like he is he is inside of her, and Mike comes out and they just freeze. They just freeze. Yeah. Or maybe he was he was in the bathroom. They put him in the bathroom. Now he's coming out of the bathroom. Yeah. So he's in his room now. She puts herself together, kind of composes, goes to Mike's room and just gets in bed next to him, but doesn't go to like, sleep. Like, doesn't change. She just, like, shimmies into there. She's, like, so... But she looks so small. Like, she's so, like... Well, because she feels guilty. She yeah. feels guilty. Emmy has this way with her eyes of making herself look so small. Well, she's so doe-eyed yeah. that she just looks, like, vulnerable. Then, also in bed, Maddie and Debbie cuddling aren't they spooning Ugh. they're spooning or something and it's like she's 13 she's 13 he's 20 you're 20 she's 13 you're 20 she's 13 she's 13 you're 20 you're 20 but the next morning mike is very hungover and he notices a hickey on fiona's neck and he assumes that he did it when he was drunk oh he's like oh sorry i didn't me- when did that even happen though because it seems like they were making out making out on the mouth and then it was like dick and pussy <laughs> <laughs> for context <laughs> lena just said that and then waved to a roommate <laughs> she's leaving she's on her way out yeah she's been putting around the whole time listening to me Are you about me? yeah we're talking bye about bestie you. tell her we said bye this is the one that listens to the podcast nice <gasps> oh what's up yeah no you gotta leave 
Um, <laughs> bye. Bye. So she says that she needs to get home and he says that he's going to call in sick to work because he's hungover. Um, but she's like, I need to go home, go to work. And then like, obviously if she goes in and he doesn't, nobody really suspects anything weird about it. Like they're just kind of like, oh, like, yeah, Fiona's here, but like Mike just must be sick. So Fiona takes Elle home and feels judgment for her ripped fishnets. There's like this old lady like looking at her legs and then looking but her there's up. there's this journey that goes on on Emmy's face where she's like, she's ashamed and she's clawing at them. And then she like is kind of grabbing her leg and remembering and smiling like. She's having a sex slash back. And then she's like, okay. She's like, I'm kind of kinky. Well, because she's like, she's like, oh, I'm so ashamed. Like such a dirty girl with my ripped fish nest on the train. <laughs> and then she's like, wait, I had some ping and sex to get these ribs. <laughs> She's like, I'm a dirty girl with the ripped fishnets on the train. Like, Yes, I'm girl on the train. And Maddie drops Debbie off at home after this and Carl sees. And then Fiona comes home and tries to talk to Carl again and he still ignores her. And she apologizes for staying at Mike's two nights this week. And Debbie says that she didn't even know she was gone. Because Debbie wasn't <laughs> there. She says it kind of like, kind of cunty about it. Yeah. She's like, well, she's like, she's like, well, because she's gone like during the day too. Yeah. And so Debbie's like, we didn't even notice. And it's like, don't be a bitch. Yeah. But- at school, Lip tries to thank Ron for letting him use his computer, but he gets caught in another flash mob. And Lip is the outsider still. We get it. It is still a cool scene, though. It's cool, I'll but say it. they didn't need to do it two times. Yeah. The first one was amazing. Yeah. It's like just another scene of everybody doing the standstill flash mob thing. And Lip, like, Lip was in the middle of a conversation with his roommate. And his roommate participated in the flash mob instead of listening to Lip. And Lip just, like, walking ahead, like, we get it. He's out of place. Well, and Lip, it's like Lip doesn't even stand there and wait for it to be over. He just leaves. Like, okay. Yeah. But in class, he gets his paper back. Kind of quick for that. What is it? Like a two-day turnaround? Right. He gets his paper back and it's a 77. But at least this one seemed to have like constructive feedback written on it, not just like this sucks. You suck. <laughs> Cause I guess I guess it seems like he really did try. And this professor handed it back too. And, and like the way that professors do in television shows, he like handed it back. He's like, better. Like that was better. Like Yeah. Oh, it was the uh the TA who It's the TA who it. does all their So at home Fiona's getting ready for work and she tries to cover up the hickey from Robbie. It is a big purple well that makeup team did a bad job <laughs> yeah but it's like well because it's like of course you have to cover it up yeah she like puts on like a big collar and like <laughs> it's like a turtleneck yeah she's wearing a turtleneck or something and she's like trying to cover it up but obviously it's not working very well and obviously people at work are gonna be like "Ooh, got freaky with the boss like yeah lita i'm gonna go back to what you said like when did they have time to do that we watched the entire sex scene wait because it's like kissing on the mouth kissing on the mouth kissing on the mouth dick and pussy dick and pussy yeah when that happened when did it happen and then immediately like right after it was like well because for a for a hickey like that you gotta suck for like a hot second oh my god i put in the work and got nothing in return they had to go at that you know what sometimes i post an episode and i'm like does this one really need an explicit rating um <laughs> dick and pussy dick and pussy dick and pussy dick and pussy, dick and pussy, dick and pussy. <laughs> I love the internet. I can say whatever I want. <laughs> uh, so she calls Mike uh, to check on him, but Robbie picks it up and she's freaked out. She's like, why are you on this phone? Yeah, yeah she's like, "Why? Are you, where's Mike? And he's like, he's sleeping, chill. And she insists that what happened- He's like stirring some coffee. Yeah, that what happened did not happen. And he says, yes, it did. And it's going to happen again, you addict. And she's like, she's like freaking out, but she's like- It's a little bit hot though. Okay, he's kind of sexy. He was kind of sexy when he said that. Like when he's- <laughs> He was being really dominant and manly about it. Okay, but like, say it again. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, I'm loving this vanilla little boy I'm dating, but oh, but oh, hello. But he's being really loud and manly about it. Yeah. <laughs> so she hangs up and she looks at Frank just kind of laying there. And she's worried that he's right. Yeah, she's she is like, she's worried. So I'm an addict. I, I think I think I might be an addict. Chaos junkie. Credits. And then the after credit scene is Carl releasing the dogs he stole out the back door. They're just running. Uh, next week on Shameless, Lip smashes up a car in the iconic fuck you, you fucking fuck t-shirt. I kind of want to buy it, not going to lie, guys. I have not been able to find it online. I bet you can find it on Redbubble. Oh, yeah. Oh, true. I didn't even think about Redbubble. Yeah. Um, and then he tells Kev that he's done with, with college, college crap, and she, he goes back to Mandy, who punches him out. Mandy's back. Uh, Fiona continues to tell Robbie to fuck off right before fucking him again. <laughs> Frank finds out how much a transplant costs and then tries to break his leg for insurance money. Yep. 
So how did wow. we how did we feel about this episode? How do we feel about this episode? How do we feel about Lena leading the discussion? I love this episode. Uh, I enjoyed Lena talking about the episode. Yes. Well, dick and pussy. <laughs> dick and pussy. <laughs> this is easily so far like like the first episode of the season was not good, and the second one was like, all right, this so far is like, oh fuck yeah, we're getting into that good shit. Yeah, no, we're we're in the season. Yeah, like we're we're moving, we're moving now. Like, well, because the second one, like Evan, if you remember, was just kind of like setting up stuff for this episode yeah like it was a very short episode it was just like the premise of catching you up about like what happened in the last episode and then setting us up for what's going to be the main plot points in the remaining yeah but like yeah last week set us up for us to screen this episode the entrance of robbie in all forms of the word paramount so paramount so so good like if we can't have justin we have robbie like i yeah mm. I can like I cannot wait for Justin Chatwin to make his grand entrance again. But like in the meantime, Robbie, I love this. Robbie's a really good replacement. Well, and like, and we like Mike because we want to root for Mike. That's the thing is, it's like it's the one time that we're like we want to root against Fiona. Yeah, mm. we do because we're like I don't want her to cheat on Mike, but then we're like I kind of get it why she's doing it. Yeah. Like, I, we like this man. He's good for her. She seems to be doing good. She looks super hot meeting his family and stuff. But, oh, Robbie, though. Mike's too vanilla for her. I feel like he could get, I feel like Mike could get freaky in bed, though. Yeah. Oh, I bet he could, but he's not. Well, he's not. But that's why Fiona needs to push him a little bit. She's not being patient. He'd be too worried. She'd, like, ask, she'd, like, ask him to spank her, and he would, and then be like, did that hurt? Are you okay? Like, just do it, though. Fiona has to top him. <laughs> yeah. That man is begging for a pegan. That's yeah. Yes, he's so <laughs> peggable. He's he is submissive and breedable. <laughs> oh my god. He's so submissive and breedable. Yeah, yeah. I was just watching New Girl today, and it was the episode where Jess kisses Schmidt's dad, and Schmidt's dad says, "You remember when you had me up against the barrels?" And Schmidt goes, "He's a bottom." <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yep. Oh my god. Jake McDormand, if you're listening to this episode, that's the actor for Mike, by the way. Jake McDormand, I am so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you are submissive and breedable, though. But also come on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, come hang out and talk with us and talk about your little, what, eight episode appearance? <laughs> but like the Debbie in this is like, I feel bad because in this moment, she's the victim and she's being groomed. But like, and yet I'm still mad at her. And yet I'm still yeah, mad at I her. I don't like her still. Like, he, Maddie is very clearly the bad guy right now. And I hate oh, right. what the writers do to make him less of the bad guy. And we can acknowledge that yeah. most of what Debbie does in season four is be, is a result of some of her being abused, yeah. essentially. Like, her being cunty, all of this stuff. It's like, it's a, res- it's a trauma response. But then when you get later, it's like, oh, girl. Like, it's like, oh. Yeah, like, I feel better about her in the hole if she did not take this attitude and just keep it for seven more seasons like Mm -hmm. nobody ever i mean i mean but also it's like i feel like they really did try to be like no debbie like you should not be acting like this like they really did try and even in season 10 they pulled that shit with her being like um debbie you're suck and they were all like uh we don't want debbie to be the head of the household and she was like okay fuck you guys well and then she was like i'm spending all the money on well, and then in season 11, like, she got so upset and everyone got so mad at Lip when he called her a shitty mom. And he was like, he was like, you're a shitty mom and you're dragging everybody else into your stuff. And she was like, stormed upstairs and everyone was like, oh my God, Lip, like, why did you say that? And it's like, he was right. She is. <laughs> we don't all hate each other. We just all we hate just Debbie. All we hate all hate Debbie. Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> so true, Ian. And then literally an episode later when when she's like yeah uncle ian's my favorite it's like he hates you oh he does not enjoy you girl get a grip lip, like i like what this episode does with lip because i'm i love seeing lip in a spiral because jeremy allen white does lip in a spiral so well so, he's a great dramatic actor i have not watched that movie yet of, with him and i think it might not be addison it might it might not be Ad- but the cancer one the one that he shaved his head for I haven't watched oh, it yet. Oh, I watched the, oh, so I actually watched the one movie, uh, the scary movie he was in. It was The bad. Rental? The Rental? Well, bad. and like Dave Franco wrote and directed it, and then Allison Brie. It was Brie. so bad. Did we talk? I feel like we talked about this a couple episodes before. I think we did. Well, he did a movie, I don't know, I don't think it was with Addison, because Addison and Jeremy 
and Allison Brie and some other guy are in the rental because it's Dave Franco's movie and Dave Franco and Allison Brie are married. But this cancer movie that he did, that was why he shaved his head. That was why he shaved his head like around season eight, nine for this movie. Yeah. I heard it was good. But but like the lip, I just like he he does lip spiraling into the abyss really, really well. And Emmy is killing it because first, like, let's say again, she looks fucking hot. She looks hot and she's thriving. She looks gorgeous. Uh, she looks gorge. She looks so good. Her hair looks so good. She looks so good. It's like, and like, hey, girl, <laughs> I understand that she was like, hey, I would like to do less sex scenes. I'm like, yes, please give her just more drama to do. But the woman can do a sex scene. The woman knows what she's doing. It's. Oh, yeah. It's so good. Carl, I agree. This is one of Carl's best episodes. Like. Yep. I agree. Lisa Morales. Well, and it's also like something this season does really well is like building up a lot of smaller events to the big yeah. climax of it all. Being like, okay, here's... Everything ties together instead of it being 17 different things. Like, here's the tipping point of everything going yeah. to shit. It's like, we're building up to that because, like, she's meeting Robbie. Robbie's trouble. Frank needs a liver. He meets Sammy. Debbie is getting groomed by this guy. And it's like, and Mickey's upset. And it's like all building up to, like, this climax that happens in episode six yeah. where it's like, okay... Everything has officially gone to shit. This is also the most consistent Kevin V storylines will ever be. Like the bait, like yeah. them getting pregnant and having the babies and struggling with money is the only consistent storyline they've ever been giving us. Every other storyline of theirs lasts one or two episodes and fucking expires and goes away. It's also great because Kevin V are working as a team. They're not again. They're not pitted against each other. Yeah. Because like they've done like they like they do. I think they do this like once in the later season, especially when Svetlana comes into the picture, into the picture where they pit Kevin V against each other mm -hmm. and they're kind of like on the verge of a breakup. And they did it. They did it right after the babies were born too, where Kevin v where had, been... had postpartum depression. Mm -hmm. Kevin just wasn't understanding. And so it's like this storyline is really great because it's Kevin V working as a team against outside circumstances, which was like the whole thing that we complained about with Ian and Mickey a lot of the time is we were like, like in season 11, we were like, they're, they're beefing with each other and not taking on outside problems as a team. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so they're doing that really well with Kevin V. Yeah. And then they start doing it fine with Ian and Mickey, but it's like, ugh, takes them a while. You know, I love it when a couple can just participate in a storyline together instead of against each other. Yeah. But also without it being about, without it being like, their the fate of their relationship hangs in the balance you know what i mean because yeah. it's like a lot of yeah. the time when like we have an ian and mickey storyline it's like when and they're both in it and it's about them being a couple it's like oh they're on the verge of a breakup yeah mm -hmm. not that's why the bipolar storyline was really great because it was like they're taking this on as a couple yeah like they're taking this on as a team against outside circumstances we have no doubts about whether or not their relationship will survive. And then obviously some things went And then awry. the writers and the producers <laughs> and the people that don't want to pay Nola's money stepped in, but bleh. Um, But yeah, it's like, I, I fucking love season four, man. And this is the, this is the best one out of the three so far. Season four is so good. This is probably going to be one of our heaviest seasons. Well, too. and we've been recording for an hour and 20 minutes. Like this is obviously we fucking love this episode like we fucking just love season four they're all gonna be like this yeah like we just looking back at every other episode like the amount of times we were like we can't wait for season four we can't wait for season four it's like we're, no, we're here. here we're here what do we do now we should just we should just quit while we're ahead we'll just quit after season four we'll be like yep. no more podcasts yep. we're done. <laughs> actually no let's do up to season five episode 11 and then we're done <laughs> and then we'll be like, oh my god, the show got canceled. Magically there was a ending. crazy, <laughs> there was so a crazy weird. crew strike, <laughs> which there is about to be. No, they assigned to go on strike. They're on strike now. No way, really. We stand with Ayatsi, babe. Well, they, I know that, I know that they signed, they voted to strike. What is this we're referring to? I don't know if production. I don't know if production has stopped uh, yet. So it's basically production crews. It's against. It's mostly against streaming services that are still considered new media and get to operate under new laws and rules. Um, it's it's basically workers being like, "Hi, we would like a meal break, and if we don't get a meal break, we would like to be compensated for not getting the meal break, and we would like mm -hmm. shorter days so that we don't die falling asleep driving home." And people like Apple and Netflix are like, "Fuck you, no." So, That's worker so strike. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. I think they did vote to strike. I don't know if production has stopped yet on like shows and such, but um it'll yeah, mostly be did, streaming shows that get that get affected. Yeah. Yeah. They did vote to strike though. 
we stand with IATSE here, man. Give that, give those yeah, crews what they we're deserve. An, we're, an, yeah. we're an IATSE backed podcast. Yes. Or we, we back them. <laughs> yes. We back they're, them. They're backed by our podcast. <laughs> We, we, I totally believe in the strike. I'm so happy. It's like, but do you remember the writer's strike? Like, that is the level yeah, this could like, be at. What is it? What was it, 2008 or nine? Yeah. Like, shows could yeah. get canceled. Like, it, it could, it could get crazy. Yeah. Very real, guys. Yeah. I kind of hope Love Victor gets canceled. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that show. Fuck that show for real. I never watched a single second of that show, but it wasn't very it's good. not good. Well, and then, and then Hulu, Hulu put Victor and the guy that I really hate up against Ian and Mickey in like a ship pole. Fuck off. And Ian and Mickey fucking blew them out of the water. Yeah. No, it was Victor and Benji. And for some reason, every time I look at Benji, I'm like, I hate that guy. Mm-hmm. And yeah, they put Victor and Benji up against Ian and Mickey. And everyone was like, you really think you can outdo the doer? <laughs> I can know you can. Okay, but let's wrap it up. Let's get out of here. It has been an hour, like an hour and a half, but we are yeah. so fucking hyped to be back in season three. And you know, sometimes so the episodes might be two of us. Sometimes it'll be all three of us. Who knows? We're we're figuring it out as we go. Mix and match. It's a vibe. We're going to do it. And uh, I'm so happy. It's been a long time since we recorded. So I'm really happy that we it got has. to yeah. record. <laughs> well, since we've recorded with you, it's been a long time too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Lainey did an incredible job. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's so well, good. I, yes, you I, did. didn't, I haven't heard our previous episode, so I don't know because it's not out yet. It's so. good. Yeah, I really, really like it. I'm liked nervous. It. I'm and nervous. if you want to do the notes for the next one, if, if you if you want to do it, and you want to lead, I would be so down. No, if I you want to do it. like I, I like oh I God. like listening to you. I like the way you tell the story. Oh so my God! Like, <laughs> don't let me do yeah. it like this. <laughs> Uh, but we'll figure it out. We'll be back every two weeks. Uh, this break gave us enough of an opportunity to get far enough ahead that I think we're going to be okay, even with school and work and all of the things coming in. But we're so grateful for everybody. Our listenership has been crazy recently. We got 53 listens yeah. in the first day of our last episode. Holy shit. Yeah. What's up, girl? And like, and like the interaction on our social media is like, we talked a little bit about it at the beginning here, but it was like, Damn, it's been really fun talking to you guys. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm you, having a good time. If you want to talk to us, tweet us at Luck We Had Pod or DM us on Instagram at Luck We Had Pod. Email us Luck We Had Pod at gmail.com. You can find me on Twitter at Abnormal Amanda, on Instagram at Abnormal Amanda18, on TikTok at Abnormal Amanda underscore 18. Where can they find y'all? Uh, you can find me uh, with a new Instagram user, thanks to Instagram liking to hide my account. It's I'm okay 4000. Uh, and then you can follow me on TikTok at unevent, U N E V A N T. And I don't use Twitter, but I've been on there a little bit more uh, at Internet Life Yo. And Lena, uh, where can they find you? You can find me on Instagram at Kojak, C-O-J-A-C-K-K. You can find me on Twitter at Durs Holmbick from like from Workaholics, but the L in my username is an I. And I don't really use TikTok. I think my username is F-R-L-E-D-M-A-N, but it might also be Kojak. Yep. So, <laughs> and if you guys are interested in a sticker, and also if you want to guys keep an eye on our Instagram, we might be having some um new limited edition stickers yeah, uh, I don't that know. maybe like, one of our little co-hosts. Uh, I don't know. Maybe like one us. of our hosts who's like uh in college or whatever is like uh, an art student or something. Uh, who's and, a graphic designer now? I think is like designed a little new logo or something. I don't know. That's crazy. But if we're able to print up enough stickers to sell a couple of them to you all, we you'll see you'll see a little posty post about yeah, that. Yeah, just keep an eye yeah. on the Instagram and the Twitter, uh, and we might have a new design coming out soon. And you can DM us for, but for our existing stickers of just our logo, you can DM us. Uh, you can DM us or you can DM Evan, and we'll get that out to you. But to wrap it all yes, up, yes, yes. until next time, let's get the fuck out of here. And until episode 404, I'm just, I love season four. I love it. It's uh, so fun. Thank you all so for great. listening. Thank you all for being here. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.